Learning any language requires coming across a lot of input so that you can replicate that input in the future. A great way to reinforce what you've learned is called sentence mining, which is pretty much taking a sentence that a native speaker has said and studying it so that it seems natural to you. Today I'll be going over a workflow method that I've made for watching TV shows in Mandarin to help improve my Mandarin, and it's been working great for me so far. Timestamps will be in the description as always. First, let's talk about the resources and programs that you're going to need. Netflix is the content I'll be using for TV shows and movies, but if you don't have the money for Netflix, don't worry, because later in the video I'll be going over Billy Billy, which is free. Language learning with Netflix is a free extension that allows you to see your native language subtitles and the subtitles of the target language at the same time. As far as I know, it's only Chrome exclusive though, so keep that in mind. Anki is a space repetition based flashcard program that I use for pretty much all of my language learning processes. Maybe I, I probably use that program a little bit too much. ShareX is kind of a multi-purpose screenshot software, and I'm going to be using that for putting the audio of the TV show and putting that into an Anki card. Dictionary should hopefully be self-explanatory. Uh, please use the dictionary. Optional and not needed is a VPN, so this is if you're directly in another country and you're, you need to see a TV show that's only locked in a certain country. You can use a VPN, which is paid obviously, but you don't need that. When watching a show and I come across a good sentence, I can look at the right and I can copy the Mandarin subtitle and put that on the front. And then you can put the English subtitle or your native language subtitle on the back. I can't spell. As a side note, this is going to look like a black screen because I don't think my recording software likes people trying to pirate stuff, or that's what it thinks is people are trying to do. So this is going to look like a black screen, but it looks normal on my end. Now the inevitable nature of translations is that they're not going to be exact, and there's always going to be a little bit of something that's lost from the translation into your native language. So if it helps, you can always put context that adds context to the subtitle. One of the problems with this sentence is that it contains a vocabulary word that I don't know, which is right here. And this card is meant for, well, the sentence, not the vocabulary. So for now, I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to put the definition for the vocabulary word on here, which I'll address this issue later. A sound clip technically isn't necessary, but it helps so much for getting more listening skills and for getting intonation down. I actually stole this method from Matt Persia Japan, so if you want to look at the full video on how I set this up, then go look at his video. I'm actually going to need headphones for this because I like audio. So I have it set up so I can press a single hotkey. Okay, now I have it recorded. And as you just saw, so that's the file itself. So as you saw, it had a little bit of a, uh, a red outline around here. So when it's red, that means it's not recording. Then a second later or so, it will go to green. And that means it is recording. So you just play it and then press a hotkey again. And now it just, this is the file that, um, that's the file it outputted to. What I can do is literally drag this in. And this looks a little wacky, but it'll look fine later, trust me. So in the card format, this will look like a play button, which you can press play and then it'll play. So to recap, I've put the Mandarin subtitle, put that in the front, then I've put the English definition on the back. I've also added what's not totally necessary, but context, just in case I don't fully get what the person is trying to say. And then for unknown words, thank gosh I only have one. So I put the unknown word on here, which I'll address later. And then I've also put the sound clip, which is optional but really helps. So to me, this card is pretty much complete and I can go ahead and add it. But there is a little bit of a problem. Um, you might notice that this one vocabulary card here. So I'm, I'm learning the sentence, but I'm not necessarily learning the card. What I want to do is create a secondary card for the vocabulary, as well as the sentence itself. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to add that. And then I'm going to go ahead and create the, the vocabulary card itself. So on my phone, I have it pulled up. So that's the card. And then I'm going to go ahead and add the definitions that I put there. Oh, and opinion too. So now I have that. And then a good thing I can do is put the example sentence that it appeared in as context. So theoretically, if I didn't grasp the full meaning of what this card or what this vocabulary word said, then I can put the sentence 
and yeah, now I have context for it, just in case. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that if you didn't have money for Netflix, there was always another option you could use, which is called Billy Billy. So imagine YouTube, but it's China's version. What I like about this site is that it's free, and it has tons of user-created content, and on top of that, it has Mandarin subtitles for pretty much every video. The only downside, though, is that there's no English subtitles, so you basically have to translate everything yourself. So I'm going to watch this video two times. Once for the actual watching, and then the second time for the sentence mining. So now I've just watched the video once, and this time I'm going to watch it again doing the sentence mining. There's a certain level of confidence you have to have when you're trying to translate a sentence that you really don't know what it means. If you're confident you think you know what it means, given from the context of the video, then I'd say go for it. But if you're not confident, then just skip it and try to do another sentence. Okay, so now that I've typed it out, I'm just going to double check to make sure I actually typed everything correctly. Oh, just realized. Good thing I caught that. And this is why I double check it. I just realized I the wrong tone of the character right there. Since I've already watched the video, it's a bit easier to see what he's talking about, so I'm going to try to translate the sentence now. Oh, I just realized I made another mistake. No wonder that's not making sense. I was just listening to the audio. Okay, sorry, I think I've successfully translated everything from the sentence in English. Hey, future Giovanni here. Actually, I kind of messed up the beginning translation. Thinking about it now, it would be more like, the one hour street photo shoot challenge consists of the following. Sorry about the confusion. Thank gosh, there, are actually, there actually aren't really any new words I have to learn. I think this one is the only one that needs a little bit of clarification on. I think, I thought this character was another tone. So I guess in the future, if I forget the context of this video, I'm going to put a little bit of the context of this video in here, just so that I don't forget. Okay, so now arguably the most frustrating part is getting is recording the audio and getting the audio to line up. So uh, you might remember when I did language learning with Netflix, it was really convenient because I could just press the arrow keys to go to a certain part of where a sentence started or stopped. But with this, there's none of that, so I just have to time it manually. Okay, perfect. So now I'm just going to drag the audio file that I recorded. So the audio file that I recorded. 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 It's fine since I understand the purpose and the message of this translation. And then an optional translation here. I didn't really need this one, but I thought thought this was an alternate uh, tone or an, an alternate pinyin. So I'm getting clarification on that. I have translation just in case, say theoretically, if I forget that I watched this video and I didn't remember the context in which the sentence was said, this is going to rejuvenate, rejuvenate my memory. And I also have the audio file right here since I've dragged that right into here. And that'll help me um, nail down my intonation and my listening skills. Okay, so this is what the sentence looks like in real life. So as I said before, the, uh, the text, if I show you right here, yeah, it looks, uh, that's on the wrong monitor, whoops. Um, the text looks like a bunch of gibberish, or it's just the file name. But in real life, uh, you can press this. I'm going to turn up the volume a little bit. Yeah, this looks like a play button and you can press it. And I have all the information I need. So that's my technique for doing Mandarin sentence mining. Hope you found it enjoyable and you're free to share it, uh, revise it, or do whatever you want with it really. Feel free to follow my Twitter at GeoSpiral to follow my updates on my language learning experiences. Like it if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, and uh, yeah, subscribe for more garbage content in the future. See you guys next time. Today I'll be exploring ex that's not even a word. As always, time stamps, stamps. So keep in mind, it's only, as far as I know, it's a Chrome exclusive, um, what do you call it? Yeah, extension. That allows you to view the native language subtitles and the, 